With today's release of Helix Stadium, there's a lot of excitement in the air. I did a video showcasing some of the Agora amps a little earlier today, but now I want to take you in depth through the new Helix Stadium desktop app that's going to allow us to control so many of the aspects and edit our Helix Stadium in a very effortless manner. So let's get right to it. I have Helix Stadium app open here and I've purposely not connected it to anything. I also have my Helix Stadium XL here on my desktop. You probably can't see it. Maybe you get a little corner of it and it is actually not connected to my computer at all. And I'm doing that for a very particular reason. Line 6 has done something incredible with the new app using the onboard Wi-Fi that is built into Helix Stadium. So I have Helix Stadium XL hooked up to the same Wi-Fi network that my studio computer is hooked up to. And when we open this up, we're going to see that it's presently disconnected. We can say auto connect, but I'm just going to hit the connect button here. And you're going to notice a little prompt comes up and we can refresh this prompt if need be. Obviously I don't need to, but it shows me what's available and it shows me that there's a Helix Stadium on the same Wi-Fi network that I can connect to, or I could put in manual IP address if that was needed. We could also auto connect at launch once we've connected to these. So I'm going to hit connect and we'll see what happens. It says it's detecting device, querying device info, and that quickly I'm now connected to my Helix Stadium XL over Wi-Fi completely wireless. This could be in a different part of my house and I could be editing from maybe my laptop sitting in a recliner if need be. So here it is. This is the new Stadium app. I want to take you through all the various aspects of this in depth so that when you get your Stadium XL or if you already have it, you can know everything you need to know about this. So we're going to start up here in the top left corner. So basically right here, I can click on this device name right here. It's telling me that I'm already hooked up to this Stadium XL, but if I click on it, I can refresh this, I can X this out. It's gonna show me what else is available. That same little screen to connect comes up if we click that, but we don't really need that right now. If there happens to be an update available, it will show a little update button here, which will allow us to click that and update if there is a new update available. As we go along the top row here, we have our home button, which is what our present view is. And if we move over from that to the next icon, we're going to have our librarian, which is going to allow us to manage our presets, our cab impulse responses, our favorites, and our templates. So there's some built-in templates here, quick start, super serial, parallel switch, and so on and so forth. There's a couple templates that I've added in here as well. We'll go through this one step at a time. So basically with presets here, we can go between factory presets, which are locked, and we can go user presets, which we will see that we have quite a number of slots available, basically 128 banks of four presets. So plenty of space for us to do some damage, building presets and spending many hours at our stadium. So there's many functions that's available here. We can create new set lists, delete existing set lists. We can duplicate set lists, import or export. We can also come under the presets menu here. We could delete presets, which is really quite handy. If I was over here and I I saved a preset to slot one here. If I was over in my librarian, I could simply click on that and delete. It'll prompt me to ask if I actually want to delete it. So very handy to be able to manage our presets. We can also import presets and export presets from here. Cabinet IRs, this is where we're going to deal with all of our impulse responses. So I could come off screen here and grab one impulse response, drag it in and find that it loads up here. Or if I have more on my desktop or in a folder on my computer, I can grab and drag in multiple cab IRs. I can also create folders, which I could say, name however I would like. We'll call this one double cream. Then I could multi-select my IRs and drag them into that folder so that then they will show up under this folder over here. Really, really handy. I could add another folder. I'm noticing right now it's popping up over there, but I can simply drag it back over here and then access a different folder, name that whatever I want. So we can rename these. We can import using the import button or we can just simply drag and drop like I showed. And we can also export them from here as well. So very handy. These windows are all resizable as well. So if I want more real estate on one side than the other, I can move that around as well. I can also manage my favorites. I'm gonna have a very specific video about favorites coming up. But in a nutshell, if we had settings here that we 
we really like. We could right click on this, add this to favorites. We can name this favorite, whatever we want. Let's call it fave, save new. When I come back to my librarian, you're gonna see now that I have that favorite saved here and I can manage these either organizing them into folders, again, deleting them, renaming them, exporting or importing. And I can delete from there as well. We're also gonna be able to manage our templates. We can drag these around into different orders. We can create folders again, import, export, delete and rename. Moving on out of the librarian tab at the top, we then come to where we can access command center. Now this is going to be a topic of another video down the road. It's gonna be a very deep topic, but just like on line six Helix, there was a command center that opens up a lot of doors for us to be able to do a lot of powerful things and we can access that from the stadium desktop app and finally we're going to have our global eq where we'll have a visual and we'll be able to come in here and access the different bands of this eq and you can see now we have high cuts we have high and low shelf eqs as well and you see that up on screen as i adjust these things they will all show visually what I am doing up there. I can copy that or I can just hit reset and reset the EQ. Moving back to the home tab then. As we go along here, we then come to the account section of the Stadium app. We click on this. I'm logged into my Line 6 account. If I wasn't logged in already, it would give me the ability to log in. And I can also manage account where it's gonna take me out to a different browser. I'll also have my little about and online help here telling me what version of Helix Stadium XL I'm on as far as firmware and what version of Helix Stadium app I am on as well, along with some legal jargon that we probably won't read. <laughs> Moving back to the left and coming down here, we have our undo and redo button. So basically if I came down over here to my amp model and made some changes, you'll notice that the undo button lights up. I can click that and undo. Once I undo, I can also redo these changes. So this is a easily overlooked part of the Stadium app, but can be very powerful if we accidentally move something that we didn't want to we can simply click back, undo, and redo that. Moving to the right, we then have our little preset window, we'll call it. If we have our little hamburger menu here, and I click on this, this is going to allow us to create a new preset, import a preset from file, or export our preset to a file. So let's say that we wanted a new preset. I can click this, and it's going to ask, would we like to create this from a template? And I say, yeah, you know, I would. I'm going to come down to Sidaitis template, which is my little template that I like to use for new presets. I click that and you'll see that basically everything comes set up the way that I like it. So that's wonderful. Now, keep in mind, this hasn't been saved anywhere yet. So it's just going to be labeled as new preset. So I would have to come over to the little disc icon, click that, and this will allow me to save the preset to whatever slot I want to. Let's go to 1A and we'll call it Jason preset. We save that as new and we're good to go. Now, if I did want to tweak this somehow and then save this as a new template, I could also come in here and save as JSON preset template and save that as new. Then when I come to my librarian, you'll see in my templates, I have that template now and I can keep it or delete it if I didn't actually want to do that. So this little box here is gonna basically allow us to get up and running with creating, importing, exporting presets, naming presets, and also saving presets or templates or creating new set lists as well. We can save, save template and save as new. Now this is a really cool little addition right here, this little info button. Let's say I'm working on a preset and we need to store some information. Let's say I was creating this for a Gibson Les Paul for a particular song in our set list uh, by a particular artist, I can type all of that info in here. I'll just save to be certain that it's saved. And that is always going to be stored. If I navigate away from this preset and come back to it, you'll see that that info is still saved there. Whereas if I change out to a different preset, that info isn't stored with that preset. So this is a really handy feature that we're going to see used a lot. And in fact, if we head on over to factory presets and look at this, it's going to give us the instrument that was used, the playback system that that particular preset was designed to be played back on, the various snapshot descriptions and what the expression pedals are assigned to. So lots of great information there. And when I do my 
video about the factory presets that I've contributed to every stadium that's going to ship. We'll take a closer look at that. Coming back to the user presets, then we can move along up here to the right, and then we're going to have our little snapshot menu here. That's going to show us our eight available snapshots. Now we can scroll through these in this manner, up or down. We can click on this and then go to the little three dot menu here. We can change colors of the different snapshots if we so desire to color code them. We can copy and we can paste and we can even rename them as well to whatever we want to name them. So really great stuff there. We have our current tempo and we have a tap tempo button. So we can tap in here just like we could on the actual physical Helix Stadium. And then we have a little global button that's going to be all about the tap tempo. So we can set tap tempo now per snapshot. So if I set that and I go to snapshot one, and let's say I wanted a tempo of 80 on snapshot one, and uh, let's say 150 on snapshot two, you see now that we can store a tempo with that snapshot, we can store it per preset or we can store it globally. Now coming over to the left side here, you see that we have our preset list. And as I showed before, we can go from either factory presets, which are locked, or we can go to our user presets, which we are free to edit and mess with in whatever way we would like. We have our little button here, which will take us automatically to our library. If we're in our library and we double click a preset, will take us back to that particular preset. We can copy and paste presets here if we so desire. We can import presets and export presets as well right from this little menu. The other very cool thing is we can search for presets and we can type in a particular word and find our presets nice and easily. So that's great. And if we are done with this and we just want more screen real estate, we can hit this little button to collapse that so it's gone. Now it's not gone forever. You do see right here this little dot right there. When I hover over it, it highlights. I click that and it's back open again. So it gives us a nice way to be able to navigate, free up space inside of Stadium app. So let's do that. Let's get rid of that for now. So then we have our main signal path window here. Now the beauty of this is that everything is resizable. If we don't want a lot of real estate up here and we just want to see our basic signal path, we can adjust this. So the more real estate is given to our actual parameters we're dealing with down here. And we can also do much like what we could do on the Helix. We can access our input block. We can access any position in our signal chain. You can see how many different positions we have here now. We can add so many more blocks into Helix Stadium XL. And since we have a lot more processing power, we can take advantage of those blocks. When we're here, we can simply come over here and add add in whatever we would like to add in. Then we have different paths, which we can work on in much the same way as we used to work on Helix and output block and so on and so forth. So that's wonderful. And when we have a block selected, like before, we can come down here and edit the parameters. So we have our list here. We could say none. We could add an amp. We could check out our favorites if we had any saved and we can see all of the available blocks. So if we come over to amp now, you'll see up here that we have some more ability to navigate around. So basically here we have guitar amp, here we have bass amp, here we have legacy guitar amps, and here we have legacy bass amps. Now there is another little three button menu that if I click, we can automatically choose to have a cab block added or not. So if I came in here and X'd out that amp and came to add one in that I didn't want to add a cab block to automatically, I can just deselect that. And when I add the amp, no cab is added. But if I come in here, add the cab block automatically, it's going to select the paired up cab with that particular amp block. So that's very cool too. We have these two little choices as far as visual too. We have the list, a text list view, or we can have the icons showing of the actual amps, which is a very cool thing to have here. Now, if we're done with this and we're tired of seeing it and we want to free up more real estate, we can minimize that as well. And then you'll see here, we have two places that we can re- enable those minimized columns that we have here. And again, we can also resize these if we want to move this all the way over and have more real estate for our amp icons, or maybe we want to maximize our ability over here to tweak our parameters. So if we had this set up so it was maximized more, and then the ability to just collapse 
and open it, that's also a very handy way to work. So now that we're done with that, let's collapse that as well. We see we have now have lots of real estate for our parameters and something really cool here. We can hit our focus view. Now we can't do everything we would do on our helix and focus view here but it does give us a nice visual of the amp we're on and we can also go to that view and add to favorites all of these settings as well so very very cool stuff but we can decide what view is best for us and adjust accordingly now something else that a lot of people are going to be very happy about is this ability over here to go between having sliders or knobs and you'll see all of the parameters now are available with knobs which has a very different feel to it a feel that a lot of folks have asked for for quite some time so we can come in here we can adjust all of these as knobs instead of sliders which then allows us to have a lot more screen real estate so we could actually minimize this all the way down have a lot more real estate up here really really customizable and quite handy there is no one right way to work on this it's just going to basically be based on personal preference and how we like to work and have a certain workflow that works best for us one thing you will notice though if i go to the cabs you'll see that we don't have that ability to switch back and forth between that. That's going to be controlled over here by our amp. And if we set it to sliders when we come to our cab, we'll also be set to sliders. Now on our cab as well, we can come into focus view. We can set user defaults. We can move our microphone around in physical space. We can match the amp, add to favorites, or link our cabs. So we can come out of that. We also have the ability to right click. So if I right click on a block, we're going to see that we have the ability to bypass that block or enable it. We can assign it to a switch, maybe on stomp A, and we want to assign it to stomp A1. We can do that, and then that will be assigned. We can assign it to MIDI, either a note value or CC number, very powerful stuff. We can enable or disable snapshot bypass from here as well. We can copy that block and then come to an empty spot and paste that block. We can clear the block or clear all blocks. We can set as a user default or add to favorites also. Now coming back down to our parameters down here, we can also right click on the different parameters and we can reset these to default, which is quite cool. If we wanted to know kind of where all of these started, we can come in here and just reset these all to where they were. We can assign any one of these to a controller as well. We can assign to MIDI, just like we talked about with our blocks. And we can enable and disable snapshot control. So again, if we wanted, let's say, to enable this mic position for snapshot, and we move it here on snapshot one, we move to snapshot two, and we move it here, you'll see that those will now be recalled as such. We could do that on any of these blocks, snapshot control. We can also press our control button and click, and it's going to bring up that same menu, but it's much easier probably to just right click on that. And that's how we're going to be able to enable snapshot control so that we can actually control these parameters via snapshot. And then we also have our power on and off button for each particular block. And of course we can do this on any type of block and have these same parameters. And if I'm done with all this, and I just don't like what I had, I can clear all blocks and start from scratch, or I can come up here and undo that and get back what I had. It's very responsive, working beautifully, and keep in mind that I am doing this all over Wi-Fi, where I don't even have Stadium XL hooked up to my computer, as long as we're on the same Wi-Fi network, and it really does work flawlessly. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and sharing your time with me. I really do hope that that was a helpful look at the new Stadium app and how it integrates with Stadium and Stadium XL, and I really hope it helps you to get your workflow up and running in a much smoother fashion now that you know exactly what we're dealing with. With the new app. Thank you guys again. Please like the video, share it with anybody you think would get some use or enjoyment of watching it. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content. I'll be back really soon with loads more Stadium and Stadium XL content. We'll talk very soon. Ciao for now.